The Boy and the Heron. That's right, folks. This is the latest film from legendary Studio Ghibli director Hayao Miyazaki, one of the most prolific and interesting creators we have working today. A couple years ago, about a decade now, he made a film called The Wind Rises, which was about a man's obsession with one specific thing he can't think in any other way but this one thing he thinks about. And for a moment, that looked to be his last film as a director. He got older, he started to see the world in a different way, as we all do, and suddenly he had another story to tell, and that story came with a question, which is, how do we live? How do you live? So then we get the boy in the heron. It's a decade in the making from Hayao Miyazaki, and it's getting a huge release worldwide. We have a really big voice cast that's attached to this for a dub in like America, North America at large. We are doing a huge push for him in, you know, more than just Japan, which is really cool to see. So tested well at screenings, you know, when these critics are coming out like this is a great dub, this is also a great movie, you get excited. As somebody who has just recently ventured into all of the Miyazaki movies, I've just kind of been going through them. There's something about them that just feels so timeless and perfect and just beautiful in a way we rarely see anymore. I'm really pumped for the new one. So I go to see it. I walk away with that feeling I get from a Miyazaki picture, which is, oh, <laughs> I got to sit with this for a minute just to really think about it. I'm doing this video kind of right after I come out of it. It's been a little bit since I've seen it, but I want to get my thoughts out there. And I could wait another day to think about it more, but I don't think my thoughts are going to change. And my thoughts on this one are, this is as close to perfect as we get in the modern day when it comes to this type of movie. We really don't do this specific thing that much. And that is just delve into the quiet moments while just be atmospheric and large in these intense ways. It's so gorgeous of a film. And we should get that out of the way at the beginning here. This is a gorgeous looking animated movie. All of the colors are fluid and beautiful. The sets that we build are great. The textures we use are great. It looks so perfect. It is perfectly Ghibli. It is perfectly Miyazaki, but it also feels slightly updated from some of the other stuff. It has this timeless feel for the characters and the world, but just the way we move the camera, the way we just like breathe with these things, the way like it's fluid and it's shot. It is so gorgeous. And nothing else looks like this right now. You can look at any other movie that's at wide release or even from this year. It has its own distinctive feeling and its flavor. And it's just such a beautiful, passionate thing to see. There is so much dedication to this movie. And it both feels like it's delving into its own nostalgia of like, this is how we think about these things. And this is the type of thing we used to do. Well, giving you this clear message of like what the future is supposed to be and looking at the world in a futuristic lens, which I really like. We're delving back into like a war-torn Japan era, which is something that's been pretty common this year for some big movies. And that's what this one is doing. We follow Mahito and he is this young boy who lost his mother and his father moves him to this new estate that's outside of Tokyo where he's to meet his new mother. And this takes him on a journey of his own legacy, of his own heritage. And that is just a classic Miyazaki thing. The guy loves setting you up for a movie where here's people in a new location it's a magical world. Go explore it. Go embrace it. Learn a little bit about yourself as you do that. We see that a lot in his movies. This one has flavors of Totoro mixed with Spirited Away if you had like the obsessive nature of the guy from The Wind Rises, which are some of the best works he's ever done. And you combine that together, you get something truly beautiful and stellar and gorgeous. This is my type of movie. And by that, I mean, I love so I, I love something where I walk away with the feeling of like, oh, I have to think about my own life, my own mortality, what I do with the time I have left, what I've done with the time I've already used. How do we come out of this just preparing ourselves for tomorrow or the day after that? I love that sense. I love that feeling. I love diving into that when it's handled for an audience of all ages, because we could get pretty heavy and heady with that kind of stuff where you don't want to show it to a kid. But when you have something like this, you can take your like grandson, which is a big part of this one. You could take your child and you can show them like, hey, eventually you're going to have to be on your own and you're going to find these lessons yourself. You're going to have to forge your own world, build your own destiny, take the blocks that are given to you and do something new with them. 
that is what this movie is about. It's about taking what you are given and building your own world, forging your own path, creating your own destiny. And that's such a beautiful thing to show people is like you have all of this given to you. You have to learn a lesson about who you are to become the world around you at large. You have to learn about that and take what's given to you at this time. But you're going to become your own person no matter what you do. And, and that's going to put you on the path that you are destined towards that you need to go down. And that's a really cool story to play that with like themes of like the dead or another world that's out of time, out of space. That is just another realm I really like. There is subtle but obvious nods. I don't know, maybe not obvious. I don't really know what Miyazaki likes or what these creators like. There is some real Neil Gaiman stuff in here, which if you're a fan of Neil Gaiman like I am, you always just pinpoint that stuff. But the more esoteric, like this is a living concept of this metaphor just walking around telling you what needs to happen. That kind of stuff, it's heady, but it works for all ages. And when you have a fun setting like this where you can use the metaphor of the birds, of these other creatures that exist around you, it really works for everyone. And it does something solely original to a Miyazaki piece while still feeling like it's in Tone of All's other stuff. It's less about like what happens when we die and more about like this is the story you have to go on. Like it's not about the death. It's not about the time you have left. It's about where you are now and where you have to go for that now. But it's also a story about Miyazaki talking to his grandson saying like, hey, I'm not going to be able to do this forever. Eventually, I'm going to pass on. And when I do, I can't give you the like the blocks, the building blocks I've given you before. You'll have to make your own. You'll have to forge something for yourself. That's the metatextual narrative, kind of the reason that the How Do You Live story really connected to Miyazaki to make him want to do this. And there's a specific scene kind of towards the end that really calls that out where you're like, this is what he's getting at. This is an old person telling a younger generation you're going to be okay. You're going to find out for yourself what needs to be done. It's both in the movie that, it's on the metatextual level that, and it's both Miyazaki that. And that is one of the few guys I'd want to get that message from because he has such like a youthful bliss to the world. Look at these cool just creatures running about. Yes, we have the big parakeet birds that look so silly and fun. We have like the little walla walla or water wada wada guys that walk around too. There is just so much love to it. And it's classic Miyazaki mixed in with this like metaphor from an old man who's telling you, create your own world. You are destined to make your own world. You have the ability to do so. And that's something really powerful. And maybe not something everybody's going to get. And I understand that. Like you have to really look for those metaphors if you're not someone who's like always in Ghibli or always in Miyazaki. If you're like a casual fan or maybe like you're not someone who actively wanted to participate in this movie you might lose those things but the message is there we have to do these things for ourselves with what is given to us from our lineage from our family from those who love us it's a story about love it's a story about motherhood and fatherhood and becoming like a parent and just your elders wanting to support you and be the best version of yourself that's a really cool narrative to, to weave, and I get that. When you're an older guy, that's the story you want to tell. You don't want to do, like, the young, brash thing anymore. We have a young, brash kid in here, but he's headstrong enough to understand what he's doing. It does take a minute to really set itself up, but that's classic Miyazaki, where we spend, like, the first 30 minutes just like, hey, here's the world we're in. What's the story about? Well, we have to establish the real world to show you the fantasy world and get the comparison. This also being like post-war Japan and kind of during the war, we see the effects of that. You see how that affects the more fantastical realm that we delve into. Who are the villains here? Who are the heroes here? That kind of thing. Beautiful. Makes sense. I mean, Miyazaki's not a guy that's going to spend time in 2023, so I don't need to see him do that, which works really well. He's really good at showing you this time period, and he makes it look fun. Also, it should be pointed out that I did see the dubbed version of this movie with the, like, all-star cast that had, like, Christian Bale, Florence Pugh, Robert Pattinson, Dave Bautista, Gemma Chan, Karen Fukuhara. Like, all of them were in this. It, it was during the time of the strike, but they were, like, they, like, I think Ghibli, like, agreed to the term, so they were able to, like, work on it during then an insanely good dub. I think it's really great. I don't know if it's the best one that Ghibli has done crossing over here, but 
you see that there's a dedication to this now and you have an like an audience and actors that are like we need to hear those iconic voices and sure i would have loved to have seen you know like the non-dubbed version this was the only one playing around me at this time but all these voices worked for me i was never distracted by it i was never taken out by it the ones that really stuck out to me as things i like christian bale fantastic he knows what he's doing here and he plays it pretty well I really dove that. Willem Dafoe has like one scene in this movie where he's just like, hey, that's the world, isn't it? It's unfair and we're here to die and that's what we're going to do if we don't learn to survive. I dig that a lot. But you have to give credit where credit is due to Robert Pattinson who's being like, hello there, creepy boy, doing a weird voice. He committed to that perfectly for a whole runtime. <laughs> it was insane. Now that character was really fun. Like he's a classic Miyazaki character, but he, he's just got like an energy to it that you love to see. And this movie's just full of shots that I just adore. Here's like a bird skimping across the water. Here's just like long shots of like a castle just existing in big towers and like this esoteric space that's beyond time and reality itself. And you're just looking at this beautiful land where there's just creatures about and just, you know, birds just flying in the sky and just sitting on the water and resting and all this stuff. And... It just looks gorgeous, and it's so well done. You walk away just feeling like, yeah, I guess I should charge for my future in a more proactive way. But I should also be thankful for those who have come before me to show me what I need to do to survive, what has to be done to survive, while also giving me the tools to create my own world. That is a lot to take in. It's a lot to deal with. But it's all true, and it's all accurate, and it just makes you feel good. It makes you feel strong. You walk away from this movie just feeling... Like you saw a whole movie that's something so visually pleasing and stunning with a great voice cast giving you the message of like, you'll be okay. It's going to be okay. I'm not going to be here forever to guide you, but sometimes you don't need my guiding. You can guide yourself like the boy and the heron did. And that's pretty cool. <laughs> you know, even if you miss the metaphor, it looks great. It's really funny. It's really cute. It's a different type of movie. And it just real it just upset my top 10 bracket of the year. It really did upset it because it's it's up at the top now. Like I just I'm having an absolute blast thinking about it, just pondering what it's telling me to think about. And I just look back and I'm like I have key moments in my mind like this is beautiful. This looks gorgeous. That's a really poignant line to say. A great script. It's all good. It's all really good. And that's just the flavor Miyazaki does. He never misses like this. Is he a director who has never missed? I don't think he has. I think all of his films are great. And if this is your swan song, it's kind of cool that your last movie could be. I don't think it's going to be his last one. But it's kind of cool that his last movie could be talking directly to you through a character in the movie like, I can't do it forever, but hey, I've shown you how to love and anticipate art and create something from it with yourself. You know, you, I can give you the tools that I created and you can make something for you in your own world, in your own mind. And that's what you could do. And also it's about your parents loving you to the end of the earth, which is really beautiful and it makes you tear up a bit. <laughs> ah, so the boy and the heron, I am going to give a 10 out of 10. Now, thank you all for watching this review. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. As always, you can check me out on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. And of course, I will catch you in the next one. Have fun. Stay safe. Good luck.